Today I'm going to show you five easy tricks for a faster and more efficient workflow. Hello my friends and let's get started. So the first and most important trick is folder structure. I know that might be a little bit boring, but finding your stuff when you have lost it, like fonts or files or stuff you have to edit is a nightmare. So folder structure is really important. And the most important thing is make a projects folder where you have all your projects so it's easy to back up on a second hard drive or online whatever works for you. And inside of the project folder, you are going to create a folder for each of your projects. So the first one I will call autumn cards because we are going to create a lot of autumn cards. This is just an example. I'm not going to create autumn cards in this um, tutorial. So inside of that, we can now create, for example, a pumpkin as our first card. So I know these are autumn cards and the first one is pumpkin and then I have another bunch of cards that I'm creating. And inside of that, I'm going to create a list of folders. So the first one is going to be source images. That's important because you want to have your original files unedited, unedited in the original size. Then we make a, make a second folder. That second folder is for materials. This is for everything that you have downloaded from the internet. For example, vector files, different kind of fonts that you're using, different kind of other stuff that you use for your project, maybe audio files. I don't know what you're creating. And what you want to do inside of here, create a text file and call it source links that's important and put in there all the links where you have used where you have downloaded your files from because months later or even years later this will enable you to say i have downloaded from here i know the copyrights i know the licensing rights i know how often and how i can use this file so this will give you all this information pretty important and another thing that i often do is having another folder 03 uh, for formats and formats means if you create your file uh, for different kind of platforms different kind of users for example you can save them in there uh, for example for YouTube for Instagram for Facebook uh, for print for screen they all have different kind of sizes dimensions requirements stuff like that and um, you can save it in there and easily find your different formats so this is the structure that I use. You, of course, can use a different kind of file structure if you want to. Okay, the next trick, the second trick that I want to show you is about snapshots. Snapshots means that inside of Affinity Photo, inside of an Affinity Photo file, you can create snapshots, which means those are versions, different versions of your creations. Uh, but you can't see that right away. You have to go on View, Studio, and then make a hook next to snapshots like here and they will appear down here next to history channels info that stuff here you have your snapshots and what this does look this is like magic let's create a bunch of shapes in my file there we go and then i will create a little bit of text uh, let's say hello real quick there we go so this is our first version what we're gonna do is simply click here on this camera create a snapshot and give it a descriptive name. That's pretty important. So you could call it um, 01 shapes plus text. There we go. So this is our first version. Now I'm just going to delete these layers. There we go. And I'm going to create an adjustment layer, for example, for recolor, set any kind of color, uh, for example, like this and create a second snapshot. And I call it um, blue recolor. There we go. And now the magic is I can just click on this other one here, the shapes plus text and click on the camera on the left that says restore snapshot. And it will recreate my folders and put them in the right position. So everything is there again and I can edit that. That is really cool, very helpful. And this enables you to create a ton of different versions inside of one file. And well, it's like magic. It's a really cool trick. 
Okay, let's go to our next trick. I will delete this real quick here. Um, the next thing that I want to show you is called prefabs. Prefab means that you have pre-created, prefabricated a file that you are using often. For example, from one of my other tutorials, I have created something that is, looks like a Polaroid shape where I can put any kind of picture inside of the Polaroid shape. So I go to File and then Place and then select my Polar Prefab. You can see here Polar Prefab and I will place it in here and I can move it around and I can rotate it wherever I want like this. And now the cool thing is I can edit this. So up here it says edit document. So I click on that and this will show me the document. And I can now, for example, I have here all my layers on the left side. I can place another file inside of here. Uh, for example, again, use the pumpkin picture. Um, let's make it a little bit smaller maybe. There we go make it like this for example and then I will just pull it on here and that's pretty good. Let's go in here and you can see now we have now this editing in here. So this is pretty cool and you can do this of course with as many prefabs as you want. You can see this saves you a ton of time. Um, you can create really cool stuff uh, like that. So another kind of magic trick to use your files and something that is similar to this prefab if you work with a lot of brand stuff for example or like me if you have branding for your own channel you can of course and this is the third trick prepare um, prepare a prefab of your brand look and the important thing here to know is that affinity photo will import your file in, um, how can I say, in relation to the DPI resolution of the file. So it is important that you make a prefab. You can see it here. When I click on place, I have my files here. And you can see I have my brand design 02. This is the size 216 pixels and it's 72 DPI. So before I import it, I want to make sure the document, when I go here to resize document, is set to 72 DPI because otherwise it will change the size upon import and I don't want to have that. So now I can place it in here. There we go. And it will always have the same size um, in my file on any kind of 72 dpi picture so that's pretty important and i can quickly use this um, to create my designs put my branding into my files stuff like that so that's super helpful okay the next thing that i want to show you and this is again kind of similar is to make pre-made files if you use files often for example for me i create all these youtube tutorials so the nice thing or the smart thing for me is to have a prefab for my covers. So I'm not importing the prefab. Instead, I have a pre-made file that I will open. You can see here cover FB. FB means Facebook. This means this is already the right size that I can use on Facebook, which is smaller than a YouTube cover. You can see here if I go to 100%, this is zooming out a little bit uh, because the perfect size for um, a Facebook post is 1200 times 630. So that's important. You can see my brand is already here. I have my background shape and my text with the right font already in here. The only thing I need to do now is to place the picture that I want to use in here and bam, I'm done. I have my cover design for my next video. I can use, you can see, I can move this around if I want. I can change the text and resize the box a little bit and I'm done. So this gives you a lot of speed and a lot of, how can I say, a, a very good, uh, a very good workflow if you have steps that you repeat a lot. So that's pretty important. So 
I think these was the five tips. We had snapshots, folders, the prefabs, um, the brands, how to import that and the pre-made file. So thank you very much for watching. If you like my tutorials, maybe subscribe to my channel. Hit the little bell so you get informed about a new video. I do two tutorials per week. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get a lot of nice rewards. See you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.